radio station. But today, head on over to supertalktv.com on your computer or your mobile device. You'll see I'm not alone in the studio today. i got two handsome men here with me, oh. Oliver Luckett and Scott Quinn. They are with Yazoo Yopon Tea. They're bringing back some, they're making something old new again, right, in the, exactly. in the tea world. But they're also doing some incredible things in the Mississippi Delta. So welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, yeah. Oliver, take me back 8,000 years ago. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what was going on in the Mississippi Delta? Let me get in my Delta? time machine. Yeah. yeah. What was going on in the Mississippi Delta well, you know, the, that you guys are resurrecting? I mean, the Mississippi Delta is such an important uh, geological place uh, and, and such an important place in human history. You know, human beings have been here for a very long time because of the river and because of the rich mm-hmm. alluvian soil. Uh, and it really is sort of the cradle of North American civilization, if you will. And so uh, back then, uh, after the woodland culture and then what became the Mississippian era, you know, we we see all these Indian mounds that we that we see in Greenville and and the Winterville mounds and in Clarksdale and the Carson City mounds and all these mound structures. And there's now a mound trail that you know people like Jessica Crawford have spent a lot of tremendous energy and time putting together mm-hmm. to to kind of recognize. But there's also a whole cultural element to it. And so uh, Yopan, which was called Kasena, uh, was a, a very important plant. Uh, for both uh, everyday use and for religious sacrament. And we're learning more and more every day as we start to uncover the story of it. But in, even in Clarksdale, you know, we've discovered maps recently from 1539 and 41 where, you know, Ground Zero Blues Club, you know, the legacy of my father and Morgan Freeman was built literally adjacent to uh, a, a temple mound. Uh, and so we're starting to see this. And so Yopan was also used as, as a ceremonial beverage. And it was a very important to uh, the everyday lives and to the ceremonies of the indigenous people of this area. And then it was forgotten. And it was erased uh, really by the efforts of the British. They didn't want the North Americans and the settlers, if you will, or the, or the colonists to have their own source of caffeine, to have their own source of tea, especially one that didn't need sugar. And so if you look more deeply into the history of it, uh, you know, we are sitting on a gold mine here uh, that was really erased by the British. They literally changed the name from Ilex Cassina, the Linnaean name mm-hmm. at the Royal Library in, in London, uh, they changed it to Ilex Vomitoria in order to slander the name. In the 1773 British Tea Act, they made it illegal because the French and, and uh, Spanish had a lucrative trade with the indigenous people for over 200 years, trading Casena back to Europe. Even Benjamin Franklin owned a casinery and has, we have letters uh, that Jessica has helped us find, uh, letters to Benjamin Franklin from French associates asking them for more tea to be sent over. And then we learned recently, and it's just been, you know, the, the point of all of this is that it's been such an amazing yeah. rediscovery in your backyard. And, and that's, that's say, literally be... how this all kind of, we jumped to the story. That? Yeah. It, it, it is, <laughs> you know, my father, Bill Luckett, um, who passed away two years ago, actually next week, um, he, um, uh, he brought us back to Clarksdale uh, when he was diagnosed uh, with cancer, and he was very private about it. Nobody really knew why Scott and I showed up from Reykjavik, Iceland one day, and we're like, we're back in Clarksdale, we're moving in. Uh, but, you know, we were there to be with him and to and to celebrate him and his life because, you know, he had, right. it was very serious what he was diagnosed with. Uh, And so, you know, having worked at Disney and having had kind of an adventurous life, I was always taught to look at things with the eyes of the guest as if something, everything was new, right? Everything is new to you. And so, you know, Scott and I were looking and and we also have a lot of artist friends. So we invited some artist friends to come kind of celebrate the music of Clarksdale. So we painted, Scott orchestrated the painting of uh, these incredible murals on Ground Zero that you'll see now that celebrated Robert Johnson and the Crossroads and uh, and Mississippi John Hurt and Muddy Waters and you know even Nate Dogg and Sam Cooke and Ike Turner and Rick Ross all of these incredible music artists right here from Clarksdale yeah. right here you know it's like when you start looking at it with those lens of a tourist or the lens of a guest in Disney parlance you know you start discovering things and sure enough on November twenty first of 2020, 
uh, Andrew Barabas, a gentleman who works for Whole Foods or, or owns a company that works with Whole Foods called Pacha Soap, which is at every Whole Foods. You'll see it. It's like kind of like the, the, the soap section of yeah. Whole Foods. He went into my dad's backyard and came back with a handful of leaves and said, I'm going to make your dad some delicious tea. I can't believe you have these trees in your backyard. And we're like... Okay. Look, Andrew, I really <laughs> appreciate you. Red holly bushes. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate you, Tom Shoes of you know essential oils. We know you got kidnapped in the Congo one time, but you're not going to feed my this father. Is Mississippi. This yeah. is we Mississippi. Don't, we don't grow trees in the backyard. <laughs> exactly. I mean, tea in the backyard. Exactly. Blueberries, maybe. The but. mosquitoes will carry a small child away, and we're not going to eat the red poison holly bushes. Right. Yeah. Literally. I and mean, that was our discussion. And he said, that's the story that I want to tell you. And Exactly. And then I look over, and my dad's like, ooh, it's delicious. And I'm like, what? You know, like, dad, put it down. Did he steep it for your dad, or he, did he, he make ice He made it with the leaves. He made it, and he steeped it as a hot tea, and my dad loved it. And he's like, oh, Oliver, he's like, this is the story. And it's, it's just not every day that you discover mm -hmm. this what we believe is a billion dollar industry in well, your dad's backyard. A billion dollar industry. And you know, every bit of tea you've consumed, with the tiny exception of some entrepreneurial people in Charleston, South Carolina, and here in Mississippi, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. you know, but the plant Camellia sinensis is means of Asia. Tea, the East India British Tea Company, is not the North American tea company, right? It's it because that plant and just Mother Nature, the way it was designed, that plant requires high altitude and humidity. We have the Rocky Mountains. We don't have the lush tropical equatorial right. you know, mountains like they do in Asia and, and North Africa and other places. And so it just isn't suited to grow in this environment. It's sort of like trying to grow wine in places. That in shouldn't it, be. That yeah. shouldn't be, exactly. And so it's just not a scalable crop. Yet here we have this endemic, which means both unique and indigenous, endemic species that only grows in North America. It grows from the Florida Panhandle, where the Timucua Indian were, all the way up to the Mississippi Delta along the coast. It loves that sandy soil that the Delta is so mm -hmm. you know, famous for, our sandy alluvian, uh, alluvian floodplain. And, uh, and it grows incredibly well because it doesn't require pesticides as caffeine was designed to ward off leaf-eating insects. And, uh, That's and, why and, I love caffeine. And it rewards <laughs> pollinators. Well, it also rewards pollinators if there's a lot of competition. And remember, the Mississippi Delta was a swamp, swamp. and an yeah. old forest. And a, you so know, if I mean, you it, could survive as a plant back correct. You know, before <laughs> you all that. You had to be special. You were, spe yeah. <laughs> you were special. And, and the unique thing is, and, and the reason it was rediscovered, which is really funny, is in 2015, uh, there uh, were some researchers from uh, the University of Illinois, which has a great archaeology department, and they, uh, Cahokia, which if you've ever been to St. Louis, outside of St. Louis, uh, Cahokia um, has these incredible mounds, 100 foot tall, it's called Monk's Mound. We actually got to go there with our friend Marlon Blackwell, the architect. He took us there for the summer solstice, yeah. and all the planets were aligned Weren't with they the so mounds. Incredibly oh, intelligent oh. With, yeah. It's just fabulous. And so we, uh, we went there and we learned, uh, and I, I massacre his name, it's P P P Chocolate. Help me, Scott, look up the, the researcher's name, but he had basically discovered this cup called the Cahokia Cup. And he scraped the cup and then he put it into uh, a spectral analysis machine to look at the chemicals that, of the, what was being consumed by the indigenous people in this cup 2,000 years ago. And it, they kept finding all of this theobromine and theobromine is very unique to chocolate. And they were like, well, how in the world is chocolate getting all the way up here to St. Louis? Chocolate is from, you know, equatorial right. regions, South America, Central America. Were they trading cocoa? Did the Mayans trade all the way up? And so there was this entire mythology that there was this international trade, so to speak, you know, three, 2,000 miles up the river. And nautical... In Technology not that it at the time. Not just, that it, they weren't probably, some very, I'm yeah. sure, aggressive rowers that were going to row up the Mississippi, <laughs> but you know, I mean, he, Scott just swam 1.2 miles in a triathlon, and I don't know if it they're making it, it 2,000 miles. Though. No, it definitely Going was not. Against. It was at Shelby Farms. <laughs> yeah. But but um, but so what they re what they discovered though is that it wasn't chocolate. It actually it was yopon, and that was the rediscovery moment in 2015 that led us to today. Led us to today, and we're going to learn more about the Yazoo Yopon story coming up next here on Good Things.
Com. We're continuing our conversa- conversation with Yazoo Yopon founders. We've got Oliver Luckett. We have Scott Quinn in the building. And they chose Clarksdale of all the places you might could have done it, Oliver. Hmm. Yeah, I know you came back home because when your dad got fell ill, uh, Bill Luckett, you felt a connection to Clarksdale. But you specifically, with intention, said, I'm bringing an industry here. I'm going to create an industry here. What led you to that? I mean, you know, it was really the discovery of it in Clarksdale. And then and then suddenly, you know, working with people like the Crossroads Economic Development Group, John Levingston, who had been really close with my father uh, when my father had a failed gubernatorial attempt. You know, he was mayor of Clarksdale. Um, and so I think that it was a combination of things. Number one, it was being back home and feeling a sense of place and really Scott and I felt yep. comfortable there. You know, most people are so surprised our life in LA or our life in Reykjavik, Iceland, that people are like, well, what do you do? And what are like, we love it. We love being back there because of the authenticity and the openness of people. It's It's been surprising and great. And then we just got this incredible flood of support from the Mississippi Development Authority, from the Delta Regional Authority, from John Levingston Economic Development. Very pleasantly surprised that it was like Mississippi was open for business. Mm -hmm. And we had just spent five years in Iceland helping that nation recover from an economic collapse. And so we kind of spoke the language of economic development, but, but to actually see it in a place like Clarksdale and to just watch every little action that we did over the last year and a half really affect people's lives directly has motivated us tremendously. I mean, we really started it off in a fun way with the mural we did on Ground Zero with yeah. uh, with Devin Liston. It was his art. And Devin now um, lives in Clarksdale. He's yeah. a friend of ours from Los Angeles. So they and, say and, once you get a taste of the Delta, it's I mean, hard to yeah. seriously, it. it's like you know the famous band Kaleo that's on a world tour right now. Their manager just bought a house two doors down yeah. from us in Clarksdale from a tour bus, having never been to Clarksdale. <laughs> Luckily, he's been now, and he and he loves it, and he's he's very supportive. But you know, we see Clarksdale as this kind of unique oasis uh, for creative people, for for uh, really trying new things. Um, it's got an open spirit. It's got this great, rich history of music and, and art and culture and writing. And, you know, my father, actually, his last interview, as we were talking about, was on Coast View. Uh, and so, you know, I listened to that this morning. It was a year ago on my birthday, last year, right before my dad's passing. And, you know, when he and Morgan started cultural tourism there and really amplified it with the blues, you know, they were seeing tourists coming there. And they're like, why are you here? You know, we didn't even really have a connection with the blues. And so, you know, he and Morgan looked at each other and said, you know, we could do something about that. And given Scott yeah. and our background of our adventures and our journeys and our successes, it's like we can do something about it. And so. And this is going to add that other layer. Yeah, you have like the tourism piece to it, but you're adding in a whole other industry. Like that's you're right. creating an industry also for lasting jobs and, you know, the and ability to grow. So what's the vision for yeah. Yazoo Yopon? Well, we have a big vision, you know. Uh, Right now, we're in the process. Uh, we have a 1.5 million tree program. Uh, we partnered uh, early on with a company called Yopan Brothers, which were pioneers in making Yopan into a product, uh, Brian and Kyle White uh, Brothers. And we have another partnership uh, with Ty Strode uh, in Apoca, Florida at AgriStarts. And they're the largest creator of blueberry trees in the world. I mean, it's an amazing facility. It's like a robotic tree farm. Jurassic it's, Park for plants It's almost. just incredible. Very cool. It's so cool. And so we literally have, with the hard work of Brian and, and Ty and the program they created, uh, an incredible 1.5 million tree program that we're working with. We brought in this incredible woman, Angela Tenbrock, who uh, won Agriculturist of the Year last year. And these are the types of talent and people that when you have such an authentic story mm-hmm. and you have this moment of rediscovery and you have the backdrop of Clarksdale and what Dad and Morgan and so many other people created it's together. Recipe. It's a perfect recipe. And it's like Mississippi, you know, we have a new flag, we have a new identity, we have a new story. We're about including and about respecting all the different people that came through here that have had the resilience that's kept Mississippi and especially the coast and the Delta through. But there's also nothing so Mississippi is a glass of tea. That is exactly right. And that's what's so fascinating is here we're returning home a product that was always meant to be here, that was the real original Southern tea that doesn't require diabetes level 7 sugar. 
Right. I mean, you're tasting and this tea right, right now. And I am right now, and it's delicious. I'll have to admit. And it has no sugar that. because right. it doesn't have tannic have acid. You like. And mm-hmm. that's why the British. I would love some more. Yep. And, so, and so, you know, what we're doing is is that with the help of Mississippi Development Authority, Delta Regional Authority, the Coma County, I mean, the list is just incredible. The community college. We've created a, a program of 1.5 million trees. We've got the first 100,000 or so in the ground. Uh, we even have a maze in the shape of the Cochia Cup and that Scott planted himself, the first 1,500 trees from our cell tissue culture program. But we also have an incredible new facility that we call the Rainbow Connection in honor of Jim Henson, you know, who's a Leland resident yeah. right down the road. Uh, but, you know, for the inspiration, because we see this as an opportunity for people to be proud of where they're from. Well, as soon as you said that, I got a text. How can I get involved? Yeah, excellent. Well, there, there are a lot of ways to get involved. <laughs> you, you know? I don't know who you are, but there are lots of ways. So what, what's amazing about it is so we're building a 38,000-square-foot facility right now. Uh, we great break ground officially in December. Marlon Blackwell, the number one architect in America right now, has given his vision to it because of Dad's connection to him. And just I'm trying to, you know, really take advantage of all the the great will that he created. Um, And at the same time, like create something magical and new, you know, just with what I learned at Disney and what what I learned about inspiring people. And so we're building this regenerative agricultural center. Angela has taken the reins of that. You know, we have a food desert. We've got to build stability within the community to have healthy employees, to have people that are excited about this. And so the two biggest goals we have is number one is we're putting an endemic species back in the ground. It doesn't need 93,000 liters of water or be Roundup ready or have five different sprays on it. Or die order. every year and have right. to be replanted. Or, exactly. Or die every year or to be replanted or be part of a, a monoculture farming system. This plant grew here for thousands of years. Let's put it back in the ground and let's harvest its leaves. It's regenerative. We don't destroy it. And let's make an incredibly lucrative product because tea is the most consumed beverage Absolutely. in America. And let's make that in Mississippi so we don't have all the transport cost of 8,000 miles in this. And if someone wants to start buying it now, how do they do absolutely. that? Absolutely. So we have local retailers. Uh, there's Beacon Supply here in Jackson. Uh, we've got uh, local retailers in Clarksdale. But I've also had the honor of going on QVC five times. We've done five sell- sellout specials. It's available at yazooyopan.com. It's on Amazon. It's on walmart.com. Uh, we've done a great e-commerce business out of this. QBC has really been helping us push. Uh, as I said, Who knew Mississippi tea would be we on also QBC? Have, um, we also have Beans and Leaves, which yeah, is up beans in and leaves uh, and, South Haven. Right? South Haven. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you think about it, the way I watched you do it, it's just tea bags just like you would already have in your um, cabinet. So it's the same process. It's not a different process. Right. So you don't have to ch- – you're not changing anything no, no. except for intentional purchasing. And it makes Correct. the most delicious iced tea you've ever had. I mean, literally, it's, you take a mason jar. You put two or three bags, depending on your taste. You can't oversteep it. You pour in hot water and you stick it in the fridge and you can refill it two or three times because it doesn't oversteep. It doesn't have tannic acid. And we drink it all day long. And it's an incredible product. Scott, I hear it goes good with vodka. (laughs) (laughs) It does indeed. Tell them about what we're doing tomorrow. So this weekend we're doing some specialty cocktails in collaboration with Cathead at the Twilight Series concerts tomorrow. in the summer, they had their first series in July, and I did the, the Magic Cat, which used the Delta Magic Tea and Cat Head and a few other special ingredients that I whipped up. But So this uh, tomorrow, we have that same cocktail back by popular demand, but also the Fall Cat, which is using the Delta Orange Tea that you are drinking right now. Last night, we had a little preview party. And went through about half the I'm supply. I'm going to have to make more stuff today festival. for sure. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, then you know so, it's a it's a big hit. Yes. Well, I just, I mean, every time you, you open your mouth, it's something good coming out of it. In terms of all the pieces that came together for this uh, for this to happen, I feel like, man, what a cool way to honor your dad. Aww. I know that's a big thing, but you know, he laid the found uh, the foundation and the groundwork with all of his love and and his life legacy there in Clarksdale. And you're just picking up the reins in a, in your own unique way. And and grow and building upon it, right? And sort of building upon that. And I think it's cool too to see that Mississippi can get excited about its history in a in a in a way that they can be proud, it's, and see it come full circle, and then you know pay respects where it's due, which you guys have in like logos and naming and all of that. Yeah. And so I can't wait till December. 
in that it's way. It's a logo. I know. I yeah, want one that, of those cups, too. I feel like you need to add that to your repertoire of things absolutely, you're going to be selling. People so. love the swag. I mean, I've got the T-shirt. <laughs> and they're going to love you guys. They do. They're Thank already you. texting in. How awesome. can they support? Where can they go? So online, how can we can get, get connected today? Yasuyopan.com, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, on Amazon. I mean, we're available pretty much everywhere. We've worked really hard to try to make it ubiquitous for these moments. Well, so. this is just the first of many. You guys come yes. back, right? Oh, oh yes. absolutely. Please. All right. Please. You, you Maybe guys... we'll come back for a cocktail hour yes. session. Ah, yes. We, like we that have to be pre recorded. <laughs> 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 All right. You guys stick with well, us to get more for so you coming up next. Support. Yes.